Now we're taking a closer look at how last night's protest grew to include more than 400 people. State police tell us that the demonstration that shut down I-95 was fueled by social media. So we tracked when the first tweets and Facebook posts hit and how protesters shared the blockade once it was raging. Target 12 investigator Walt Buto joins us now with the details. We're told this is a local example of how a cause can grow with an idea and an internet connection. Before the protest grew into this crowd of about 400 in Providence that spilled onto Route 95, plans were churning on social media. Days before the interstate was blocked, there were messages on Tumblr, Facebook, and Twitter announcing a protest at Central High School. Then more messages on Monday morning about the protest, and even more after the grand jury decision not to indict Officer Darren Wilson was announced. Do you think it grew on social media to become this protest on the interstate? Without, without question. I mean, it's a national, international story. Yeah, social media has changed the way law enforcement responds. Most of the intelligence we get sometimes is from social media. As police followed protesters from Central High to the public safety complex, one tweet announced, Providence is way more live than I expected. Quite a bit O'Donnell more, tells us while social media potentially expanded the number of protesters on 95, officers responded there by simply seeing the crowd move in that direction. And social media followed that as well, showing pictures and video as a line of people stopped traffic and clashed with police. Colonel O'Donnell tells us while social media helped this grow, this could have been a disaster if the walk onto the interstate had led to a fatality. With the Target 12 investigators, Walt Buteau, Eyewitness News.